Hello guys! In 1916, course in general linguistics was published. It was sort of a collection of students' notes during lectures made by the Swiss linguist known as Ferdinand de Saussure. In the book, Saussure created what is known as structural linguistics and he laid the foundation for the study of signs, known as semiotics or semiology. And his theories have remained very central to fields like philosophy, anthropology, media studies, literary studies, cultural studies. So, what is language according to Ferdinand de Saussure? Language is a system of signs, and signs are basically things that stand in for something else. And signs are literally everywhere! It's the pictograms of bathroom stalls showing you who this particular bathroom is intended for. And signs can be found in literary and media text as well, where they should be playing with forms and playing with codes in all sorts of interesting ways. And of course, signs can be found in cultural events as well, like wrestling or boxing or football matches or something not pertaining to sports. And the linguistic sign works the same way. For for example, we say dog in conversations to avoid picking up a dog and showing it to the people we're talking to. The word dog stands in as a representation of the actual thing. And signs are two-sided, according to Saussure. One of these signs is the signifier, or the signifiant in original French. It's the sign we use to refer to the things that we're talking about. language this is worse. For example, the word dog. And the things we talk about, our ideas and concepts are called signify or signifié in original French. Now that could be literally anything, but if we're taking the example before, it could be an actual dog. So Sue talks about the arbitrariness of the linguistic sign. This refers to the relationship of the signifier and the signifier because there's no natural link between the two. The signifier dog is not more dog-like than the signifier chair or table or flat screen TV. As a community, we've just chosen to link the word dog with the furry, fuzzy, four-legged animal. If you imagine signs like a piece of paper, one side has the signifier and the other side has the dog. Whoa! Practical effects are in my budget. It's not just the signifier that's arbitrary, it's the thing being signified as well. You can't just point to a thing and give it a name, that's not how language works. If it was the way language works, we'd all be amazing at all the languages in the world, because translation wouldn't really be a thing. Furthermore, there are other things that can't be translated directly because we just don't have the proper words in one language, but we do have the proper words in another language. And concepts change all the time. Think of a word like queer or gay, meaning flamboyant and happy at one point in history and now meaning homosexuality in this point of history we are in right now. So this means that there's no standard to which a concept that's being signified must live up to. Signifieds are as changeable as the signifiers themselves. If the community using the signs agrees on a signifier and a signified, then it's A-OK. -okay. And this arbitrariness of the sign leads us to the distinction between long and parole. Long is the structure of language, the system of language. It's what we internalize when we are learning a new language. It could be things like grammar or syntax. According to Saussure, this is the social part of language. Parole is how the language is executed. It's how we talk, it's how we pronounce words, and it's how we affect each other psychologically. For example, if I say dog, your version of a dog might be quite different from my version of a dog. I could be thinking of a golden retriever, you could be thinking of a labrador. Parole is the individual part of language, according to Saussure. This distinction means that the nature of signs has a clear pattern to it. It cannot stand alone. It must belong to a system, to a structure. And that's because it divides a continuum in ways peculiar to the language it belongs to. If you showed a person a lot of green things, I didn't show them brown things or black things or yellow things, they still wouldn't be able to distinguish between colors. You would have to teach them the other colors as well. And that's because signs are relational and they work through exclusion. So, we define the color green as something that's not brown or yellow or black or red. Color is a linguistic structure, a linguistic system, and colors are held together by the relation to other colors. And it's this structure of language, it's this long et parole distinction that has made signs very interesting for a lot of people. Another system could be chess. The basic units of chess are very straightforward. We've got kings, queens, rooks, knights, bishops and pawns. And even though chess pieces usually look something like this, their appearance really doesn't matter. 
As long as we can distinguish them from each other, we could literally replace the rooks with anything we want. For example, dog treats. So this gets us back to the simple structure of the song. A chess piece doesn't have a standard it has to live up to. It's completely arbitrary how it looks or feels. Its identity is wholly a function of differences within a structure, within a system. Remember to like and subscribe and I'll see you all next time. Bye guys!